Have you ever wondered what it means that Jesus is the king of the universe? That's what we'll talk about today. Let us learn from the Virgin Mary how to be bolder in obeying the word of God. Pope Francis. Today we're going to talk about the book, Hidden Christmas, The Surprising Truth Behind the Birth of Christ by Timothy Keller. We talked about this book in the past two podcasts, and now we're going to finish up our series with this, talking about what it means that Jesus is the King, and what can we do to better walk in that way. He talks about a situation where someone was talking about the vastness of the universe, you know, one of those things that if every planet was a grain of sand and, you know, how big the universe is. And Jesus is the king of the entire universe. He holds everything together. He holds the entire universe together. And if someone can do that, he can help you through any situation, including Mary, who had a pretty big one going on with her. He thinks in the end that if Mary could give her life to Jesus, we can too, and say what Matthew 26, 39 says, not as I will, but as you will. Some advice he gives to us about how we can go about our Christian lives is, first of all, he says, hear well. The shepherds heard the message from the angels. Mary heard the message from the angel too. So the first part of our faith is from hearing the word of God and hearing the message that God is sending us. And Ian talks about the Bible as a message and reading the Bible. It is hard. And he says that we have preachers and teachers who are very bad at explaining it from time to time. When people walk away from faith, sometimes they'll blame, oh, well, the Bible's childish. It's because they never had a grown-up faith and they never dug into it to learn anything beyond their eighth grade confirmation about what it means to be a believer in Jesus. The whole thing is that people are unreliable, but that we can learn from unreliable messengers and we can learn from hearing and reading the word of God and hearing the messages of Jesus. He talks about peace on earth for those who gracious kindness rests. He says that there's a big difference in the word that the King James Version, which is the oldest version that we have of a translation like that, means. And it's not peace as in peace on earth. Wouldn't we love peace on earth? We're not going to get that peace until Jesus comes back again. But it's about reconciliation peace, about us reconciling ourselves to God, ourselves, and then reconciling to other people, regardless of their class, their race, the place that they came from. Reconciliation is about coming together and being the family of God, everyone in humanity. The grace of God is a peace and a reconciliation for everyone. He says that we shouldn't be afraid, that we know that God, who is the king of the world and the universe, is out there for us and knows what's best. He says the quote is, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings. And people forget the word behold. It's not really something that we use any day in text. But the literal translation of it from Greek is, do not fear that has dominated and darkened your life. And the word behold in this sense means to gaze at, to grasp, to internalize. You know, it's almost like that concept of meditation in the Christian sense where you're bringing it in to your soul. Sometimes I have a fault where I'll see something beautiful and I'm trying so fast to go on to the next beautiful thing. Woo, look at the Grand Canyon, super cool. But instead, what he's saying is you bring it in to your being and let it saturate your soul. But I often skip over that part. What Tim Keller is telling us is that God wants us to behold. In the end, we think about the peace of Christmas and the word peace as many times people will say, and it'll be on many cards. But you have to realize that Jesus came to bring the sword. And it's not because Jesus is making the war happen. Sometimes we have a problem when we read the Bible, like when we read the curse of Eden. We say, oh, well, God's just punishing everyone and doing these horrible things to us. We don't realize that it was just a reaction of what happened in Eden that caused these bad things to happen. In this case, too, when Jesus says he's here to bring the sword, 
He's not saying, go out there and bring the sword to people. He is saying, my message will bring the sword to you. It will come and incite violence against you. Think about Jesus. He's walking around the countryside. Love your brother. Peace to all of you. Trust in God. Pray to God. And everyone's thinking, how can we get rid of that guy? He was challenging this pathway that was going on. Rome had allegiances. The Sanhedrin had allegiances. They all demanded it. Everything goes through them. And when Jesus comes and says, no, 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 everything comes through me. Sure, pay your taxes. Go be a Roman citizen. But your salvation comes through me. That's what brings a sword. And it is not that we are supposed to bring violence to other people, but they will bring it to us just because of the things we believe. I've never had violence happen to me since becoming a Christian. My dad, when I told him I was a Christian, never saw me again. He died, and I never saw him again after telling him. I had other people say, well, if you're going to become a Christian, it's all fine, but don't make it change your life. There was this girl who became a Christian at the same time I did, and she had the Christian cross necklace. She had the Christian earrings. She loved the Christmas ornaments on her tree. But when she said that to me, I realized to her, becoming a Christian meant adopting a new style. It was a new fashion image. If you become a Christian and it doesn't change you, you're not following Jesus, the person who's bringing the sword. I had other situations where I've been to parties that were doing things I did not wish to participate in. And when I wasn't, people got upset. People challenged me. Hey, come on in. Come, come over here. Come do this with us. And so while it's not the sword, it's certainly not comfortable to be challenged. But there are people every day, I think more people now are put to death because of Christianity than ever were in the history of the planet. And for us personally, Keller says that God's peace comes when we have this internal conflict of repentance. He says it's like pouring antiseptic on a wound. Take raw alcohol and pour it on a cut. It hurts. But you know that that hurt and that pain means that something good is happening in us. When I became a Christian, it was weird because I was actually having the best time of my life. I was finally on my own, living my own life. Life had never been better than it had been at this moment. And it caused turmoil. It caused turmoil with people I loved. And suddenly, to think that there's no such thing as accountability, as sin, as a God, and suddenly you believe it and you see it, it is like pouring antiseptic into a wound. It took my pretty happy life at that point and turned it into turmoil. At some point, I got past that. I came over that time and suddenly came out of it, acknowledging God and acknowledging what he wants from me. It's not that the things that I wanted in life changed, but how I'd go about it how I would act towards other people, things that I was willing to do and now things I was no longer willing to do, that change, the antiseptic, helped me become another person. Even though someone who didn't know me very well would probably say, well, she actually seems like the same person she always was. Internally, I had become a new being. He says that a lot of times that he feels when he sees Christianity around him, he doesn't believe that it looks like what Jesus brought to this planet at being the king, being the lord of this universe, of having spiritual strife and people coming to us with swords and fighting for the things that God wants us to fight for, that we have found this very bland form of Christianity with no fight in it at all. We go to church, we sing hymns, we're buried as a Christian, but we never start that fight. We never go after the things that Jesus the Lord asked us to go after. And if we want to be the Christianity of the Bible, the one that Jesus himself instituted, then we are going to have a fight. We are going to have to do good works, not because it's for our salvation, but because we love God so much, we are willing to do good works. We are willing to make his life coming out of our own. It will change us and it will change the way that we see the world. And the message of Christmas isn't just a nice story. It is not just a thing that we are meant to just take in and 
make pretty Christmas cards from, but it is that we can be saved by grace, communed with God, that he is never far away. And because of the message and the things that Christ did, we will have joy. We will tap in to the joy in our life, even if the things in our life don't seem particularly joyful. I talked in my other podcast, Start With Small Steps, about George Bailey in It's a Wonderful Life, and he never had joy. He didn't until he saw his life, asked his life to be taken from him. He never saw it. And when it was, and he saw all the things that he had, he finally found that true joy that comes in us. I think we think about joy as being one of those things that we get when we get what we want. If I get a savings account and I can travel the world, I'll have joy. If I get to buy that new TV and the new gaming Xbox system, I'm going to have real joy. But that's not how joy works. Joy works because we suddenly see things in the way that God wants us to see things. We have a vision in this world because the old world got burned out of us through that antiseptic. And now we're a new being. So my challenge to you is think about how you can step out on that next bridge. What can you do to gain that Christianity that makes you step out from your current life? And then write down three steps that you could do to make that happen. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate listening to the podcast. And always remember that we can walk in worship of the King by taking small steps. Small steps.